Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard. Today as you can see I'm wearing the Bida FPV shirt and that's not random. In fact again I have a package from Bida FPV and of course I'm very curious I already picked into it. But before we open it please remember to like, subscribe and comment if, on my video if you have any questions about what you see. So let's see what's inside the bag. First of all, I'm just gonna show you how they package everything and this is a shirt and they used it as padding and that's clever I guess. So they don't use extra plastic. I'm gonna show you the shirt first. This is the shirt. Actually I expected it to be a little bit bigger but I'm bigger than I think I am and it's fine. It's a little bit loose and still I'm wearing the other one underneath. Very nice. I'm gonna remove it because it's still summer and I'm starting to sweat. And then we have the real content of the package. We have four bags. Here they sent me the biggest amount of stickers I ever seen. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? I, I love it, but it's crazy. They sent me so many stickers. It's like playing cards. And then we have two receivers for their Express LRS 868 MHz system. And look at this. This is the receiver itself and actually it's the same size as R9 and uh, Crossfire basically, but the antenna is a quarter wavelength antenna. It's not gonna perform as good as the half wavelength antenna, but look how small it is. It's crazy small. And I love the fact that it's blue. And also Express LRS theoretically has crazy range so this should not be an issue. I can't wait to try this actually. And lastly we have the transmitter and inside the box we have the instructions right here and then we have the transmitter with a classic antenna and then we have an upgraded Moxon antenna I'm gonna show you. And this antenna looks incredibly good because <laughs> looks are important after all you know. Of course function is the main thing but having something that looks great is good as well. And this is the transmitter itself. I love the Stormtrooper color. Basically this is a heatsink, aluminum and this is plastic. It has an USB-C port on the back. Here a micro module bay like X-Lite radio or the um, Tango 2 radio. It's gonna fit those small module bays. And then we put the Moxon antenna. Boom! And Bita FPV makes two kinds of transmitters. You have this one, the 900 MHz range, and you have the 868 like this for Europe and 915 for US. And then there is another one and you need different receivers as well for 2.4 GHz radio transmission basically. And that one has much better latency but it has lesser range. So I'm more of a range guy, I don't want to lose my signal ever. So this one is my choice basically. And still latency is super good on this as well, so I don't care that much. And this kind of beta FPV transmitters can output powers up to 500 milliwatts from 25 to 500. And actually my R9M Lite Pro can output up to 1 watt, but I heard that Express LRS is much more efficient and should go longer range with lesser power basically, and that's crazy. And actually your battery is gonna last longer. So without further ado, I'm gonna install it and let you know how it goes. And boom, I just installed the Beta FPV transmitter on my radio. This is the X-Lite radio. And I found these Holibro copies that had the exposed receiver on here. So I just swapped it out for this. And look at the antenna, it's so, so little, it's amazing. And as you can see, it uses four wires Express LRS in fact brings a lot of advantages like you can update your firmware via pass-through so basically you connect your uh, flight controller to your laptop and there is a desktop companion app from Express LRS. I'll leave the links down in the description for the Beta FPV manual also you have the manuals inside the box but basically you connect your flight controller to your laptop and you update the receiver which is amazing and you don't have to dismount anything, tear down anything, it's amazing. Also this receiver from Beta FPV has Wi-Fi integrated into it so you can connect your laptop to your receiver which is crazy in my opinion and you need to wait like 10 seconds after you turn on and there is no bind from the radio and then you need to clip it close to your laptop and you can update it using Wi-Fi which is crazy again. And about this one, it has Wi-Fi but it doesn't work for some reason and so you cannot update this via Wi-Fi, it's also written in the manual but 
it has USB so you just connect it and you update it. And also another crazy thing about binding is you don't need to press buttons. You can but you don't need because when you update them you can put in a passphrase and they communicate instantly. So another very nice thing is you can use whatever receiver you want. Of course it has to be compatible but different brands and also you can repurpose old ones like what I was mentioning um, R9. You can repurpose R9, put ExpressLRS into them and use them with the same transmitter. Also in the future they will make probably radios as well and radio modules you can change stuff. It's amazing. Open source is amazing. Another nice thing about this receiver is you can keep pressing the button and it switches between uh, power. Basically red is 500, blue is 100, purple is 250 milliwatts. So to connect the transmitter to your radio it's actually in the description below you'll find the tutorial but I'm gonna give you very quick knowledge. You need to go into the external RF and select Crossfire because this uses Crossfire to communicate and also on beta flight you need to select Crossfire. It's like having Crossfire basically. And also if you have OpenTX you need to take the SD card, put a file that has the Lua, I guess it's called Lua. So you can actually communicate with the, um, with the module itself and it's very easy. You go into tools and you put the Lua into there. You can press it and there it connects and you can see the packet rate, the telemetry, wattage, ah, also the frequency and this is for uh, accessing Wi-Fi which doesn't work on this and also to bind. You can also bind from the Lua which is nice. And a very quick word about packet rate you can see here it's 200 Hz is the maximum for 900 MHz goes from 50 to 200 and for the 2.4 GHz it goes up to 500 which is blistering fast. The higher the number the better is gonna feel on your stick because the latency gets very very fast actually we are below 10 milliseconds crazy. The higher you go though the lesser range you get but it's not that much of a problem because the range is crazy on these things and if you go at 500 milliwatts expect to go very very far. Actually there is one guy on 10 milliwatts went 30 kilometers and it's on their web on the ExpressLRS website. It's crazy I'm gonna show you later a range test but for now I'm gonna test the 200 Hz packet rate with my drone and see if I feel the stick getting better. And let's go! Put it in acro. And Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell super low latencies apart from each other, but it feels oh, it feels somewhat more responsive. Or maybe I'm placeboing, I don't know. Because I probably... What was that? Oh, the goggle batteries. Yeah, it feels... Oh, <laughs> it feels good. Not bad. And yes, feels very good on the sticks, responsive, snappy, but I cannot really tell if it's better than before because we are at such low milliseconds difference. Probably this is uh, 9 year, 20 on the goggles, 30 milliseconds versus what was that? 40, 50 before. Mm, it's very hard to tell. But feels very good and you know it's better so not bad. And also the packet rate should be more constant so you don't should not have jitters and stuff like that. So I guess that's a benefit. And now time for the range test. I'm actually gonna take the drone and put it into the basement right there and then I'm gonna walk upwards. That's the gate. I don't know if you can see it but that's the gate of my house and that's actually... oh my god. And the gate is actually at 250 meters distance and it goes uphill and then the gate is behind the hill. So it's gonna be a super super hard test because the drone is already underground and then we're gonna go behind the hill, so basically it has a lot of dirt between it and it has no sky connection, so 
if he still picks up signal at that distance, it's gonna be crazy. And I'm gonna put it at 500 milliwatts because it's gonna be his best chance of doing it. And probably I'm gonna put it at 50 hertz packet rate because it's such an extreme condition. And if up there, I still have signal, I'm gonna bump up the packet rate. And if he still has signal, I'm gonna reduce the milliwatts to see how crazy it is. And boom, we have the drone in the basement, as you can see. And we are underground. And actually it's connected via USB power bank, so I don't burn my Cadex Vista. But as you can see, it's on and it's connected to the radio. And I pulled up the telemetry so we can see the RSSI, actually. And we are at minus 16 dB. And it's gonna go high, but I guess we're not gonna lose range. And also I'm gonna show you, yeah, four parts right now. So, let's start, let's go uphill and let's go. Basically the drone is here, we're gonna go uphill that direction and then we're gonna move sideways and that's gonna destroy it because we, are, we have dirt, trees, the actual concrete of the house and then we have metal. So there is everything in between this and the top of my house. Let's go. So, I'm going uphill and the drone is right there inside that room and let's see how much it goes so this is the first checkpoint this is the uh, chicken coop and the drone is down there inside the house down <laughs> in the ground four bars of signal this is crazy look four bars of signal everywhere it's crazy we have the house in the middle and this coop is made of metal doesn't freaking budge. I'm gonna put my body. Nothing. Nothing. I'm gonna cover the antenna. Okay. If I cover the antenna, one bar less. But it's crazy. Let's go uphill. We have four bars on the main path. So if, if I don't face the the drone, the signal gets lost. As you can see. So, we reached the gate. As you can see, if I turn around, there is only one little bar, but if I turn the direction of the actual drone, this antenna is directional, so it makes sense. We get three bars. It's crazy, I mean, the drone is underground, and we have trees, vegetation, stuff, the concrete, dirt. Wow, this is the worst situation you're gonna ever encounter basically and we are still, still two bars. Crazy. Telemetry lost. Oh. Telemetry recovered. Yeah, I mean I have to point the antenna the right direction as you can see. If I point it down, picks up the signal. Three bars. Yeah. This antenna is very very directional actually. A Moxon antenna is supposed to be pointed this way. But it's crazy, it's crazy, still four bars in some points. As you can see we are at minus 105, but the link quality is still at 81%. If I point it down, it's gonna go, you see, 90, it's crazy, 95, I mean. And now I switch to 200 Hz packet rate, and yeah, the signal has dropped a bit, it's less stable, but I mean, this is something you will never see in real life you will never go this much stuff you're gonna lose video signal so quick if you do this and that concludes the range test for this expressor arresting also you can see my grandpa bulldozer in the background and uh, it's broken sadly i wish i could use it and i'm very excited about this expressor arrest because it beat the r9 modules with a quarter wavelength antenna and half the power because this is a 500 milliwatts the R9 test I did it at 1 watt so crazy, very crazy and you're never gonna experience a situation where the drone is down there in the dirt <laughs> it's crazy, it does no access to the sky I mean, you're never gonna experience that because your video feed is gonna cut out much, much, much quicker so this is good though for finding your drone back if it ends up in a creek and you can pick up the signal if it's still on of course and looking at the db you can find it back probably i hope don't just lose it so wrapping up this review express lrs i'm very excited about it and i'm gonna probably use it as my daily driver i need to convert all of my r9 to express lrs 
and it's not gonna be you know a lot better it's just gonna be a little bit better longer range faster reaction time and I'm not complaining already I mean I can go wherever I like and I don't complain about the reaction time of R9 but what's better is better I don't complain what I'm excited for is the open source part of this project actually the developers are working very very good and they're putting out update after update and they're making it very better every time much better every time another cool thing is it's very cheap so you can get this module for 33 bucks the same price you pay for a crossfire receiver basically and the receivers are gonna be from 10 bucks to 15 to 20 which is kind of cheaper than crossfire and also r9 because those are getting expensive and they have better feature they uh, they are better in every way basically and that's crazy and also what i like about it being open source is a lot of brands are stepping in like you see here bit fpv but also epi model namimo is called another one and they are producing their own stuff and their own transmitters receivers and they are all intercompatible which is amazing and i am also seeing some brands putting the receivers into the flight controllers again very nice lighter setups less work for the end user i'm excited for this i guess this is gonna go very very far much further than r9 which every time i buy a bind and fly they don't have the r9 option so i need to always to buy a receiver and put it in there i guess express lrs is gonna become standard in the future so very excited about this it's better in every way possible cheaper faster and more range more features what do you want more <laughs> I love it. And as always, that's all for this review. You will find all the links down in the description below, tutorials and also links to buy and please click on them if you like the product because you help this channel grow a lot. Also companies send me more stuff to try which is not bad, you know. Drop a like, subscribe if you have questions, comment and as always, stay safe and happy flying. Bye.